Hey guys, welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Been gone for a little while due to a computer crash. Uh, hard drive went south, I lost all my videos, and I had some backed up, but everything has already been uploaded. Uh, I lost the uh, my workflow, my intro, my outro, and just... Nonetheless, I managed to cannibalize from prior videos little bits and pieces so that I could kind of put this back together and I hope you guys enjoy this one even though I'm going to apologize in advance. The camera angles are atrocious, but uh, enjoy. 2005 Lexus ES 330, right rear wheel. This is such a mess, I had to start this one back from the beginning. Very first bolt that we're going to take out is going to be this one right here. It's a 17 millimeter. I don't know if I can get it on the camera here. I put a little bit of anti-seize in it just so I could get it back in and back out again. Now that that bolt has been removed, you're going to take your caliper and you're going to lift your caliper up. You may have to use a screwdriver to get in and here. Find a little edge and pry out a little bit just to, you know, get some motion in this. Once you've got the motion in it, then you can lift it up and out of the way. It'll only come up so high, but you'll find that as you lift it, you can rock it and push it backwards off the top top pin. This is how this caliper is removed. This caliper is junk. So we're just going to set it off to the side. Find one of my little hooks. Now the hook isn't to protect the caliper. The hook is to pre prevent damage to the hose and the caliper hanging or falling. Now we're going to set this way up high in the strut. If I can get it up in there. And we're just going to hook this up here for now. All right. Now, this mess. These brake pads were completely stuck in here. I've already broken them free. We're going to take these out, get these out of the way. And these are evenly worn. The other side was completely toast. These are maybe up a little bit but not too much now there are two 14 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket in place we're going to take those out next Pack to spin those the rest of the way out. Now this is this this wheel here is a complete mess. The bushings are kind of squeaking and making lots of noise and you know, it's all sorts of. All right. Bottom one's out. Top one is out. I'll remove the bracket. Now, normally we would be discarding this bracket because we've got a brand new caliper and bracket to go on this, but you'll see why in a few minutes. Why we're not getting rid of this one. All 
So being that we already know that this thing has a bad wheel bearing, that's what we're going after right now. But I also wanted to point out that this uh, adjuster right here, when I initially pulled this drum off, this hole was lined up over the metal where, like this, you cannot get in there to adjust this. So you have to remember that this hole is not centered between the two studs. You'll find that these two holes here are not centered between the studs. So if you set this just right, you can actually line this up just like this. So that hole is straight through. That's what you must do with these. And that's the old rotor. That's going to be discarded. Now, these brakes, you can see right there, I'm sure, there's uh, almost no lining left on those. I've advised him that he needs to have those replaced, but A, they're extremely expensive, and B, they are on back order in a lot of places, they're, and they take a long time to get here. Time is something we don't have at the moment. So unfortunately, that's going to be a second job. But what we are going after now is this wheel bearing. I'm sure the camera's picking that up. Now we're going to take this out. What we're going to do is take these holes right here, and we're going to line them up right over the four bolts that are inside. Obviously one bolt at a time. And we're going to take those four bolts out. You get a 14 millimeter in through the hole. If your 14 millimeter doesn't fit through the hole, I'm sorry. It's too big to fit in the hole. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Get over here, get all of them mixed up. Now, when you go to remove this bearing hub, be particularly careful. Oh, I got a bolt down here that I can't get in because of the springs. So, be particularly careful because there is an ABS sensor plugged into the back side of it. Get all the bolts out. Now, what I found in the past that works well with these is these ears right here to hold your caliper in place. Let me grab a hammer. It does not have to be a BFH. I just happened to be the first thing I found. And tap up on the ear. And then tap down on the ear. See the movement? We've already freed it up. Now, like I said, be careful about the ABS wire. That was a dumb. That was a dumb. Because if I damage this wire, then we got a problem. Now we've got to get this thing off. And I have no idea how this. Oh, there it is. All right. There's a tiny little tab on this side here, and a tiny little tab in the back. And really, no room to move here. All right. So what we're going to do is get a screwdriver. And we're going to go into the back side right here. I believe. On the top of the back side. Give it a little bit of a press. And... That got it disengaged. Good. Now hopefully we didn't break either one of these wires. snake that back through out of the way you can get those off from behind but they are really tricky to do all right now we've got to get this bearing out of this backing plate somehow that's gonna be fun because it is really rusted in there just for the hell of it this open so you can see how this works. Got a bunch of little sensors all the way around here. Now I'll wire it in and then you got a reluctor ring right here on the inside. We're trying to get this whole piece right here out of this housing and it's not going well. You can see some damage up in the inside of this. Probably from me. Oh there's rust right through. Okay. Now, in any case, back to trying to get this out. Uh, 
It's going to take a lot to loosen this up. We'll be back when we get it out. And trying to get this out, you got to be kind of careful. Because you don't want to mush the back edge of this. Because if you do, you'll peen it over. And then you won't be able to get it out. But what I found seems to be working is I'm holding it up by the ear. Kind of off the brake cable. Probably a bad idea with the brake cable. But I tap around this with a lighter hammer. circular motion all the way around it and it'll slowly start working down through but again be careful you're not hitting on the outside edges let the camera recover a little bit be careful you're not hitting on the outside edges because you will mush it so hit on the inside edges and the bearing falls out and there's your whole backing unit like well, missing that part anyways. Yeah, so this goes back on like this. Of course, with the new wheel bearing in it. So we'll grab that new wheel bearing now. Here's our new wheel bearing. Now, before we go any further, let's make sure these things are the exact same height, same depth. One of the easiest ways to do this is to hold them back to back against each other. And these are a match. Now all of that crust that's on there is going to build up on this. So what we're going to do is clean all of this out. Put a little anti-seize in there. It feels fairly smooth. Everything's cleaned up in there like that. That nice and clean and smooth on the inside. I've already cleaned this up. Uh, let's get the anti C's. Let me put just a little bit around it. A little bit. I had to stop with something else. It's kind of hard to get just a little. This stuff is determined to turn everybody into Tin Man. You won't hurt anything either. All right, now we're going to take the new wheel bearing assembly and we're going to set it in here. Try to. There we go. And it all lined up on the holes. And then just because I don't want to fight with this once I get it in there. I'm going to put the switch or the plug in now. Get this bearing seated again. Now, grab your 14 millimeter extension. One of the bolts. We're gonna put some anti some lock tight on these anyways, but for the time being I just want to get one bolt in and started. Now we're gonna put some anti some anti C's, or not anti C's uh lock tight on each one of those other bolts. And then we'll take that one back out. Ooh, my lock tight's hot. I'm sitting in the sun. Stuff's like impossible to get one drop out of. All right. So we'll take this one here. That we've got one drop on. And we're going to go in through the bottom hole and get that one started. back up to the top, take that top one out that we just put in just for the purposes of holding everything. Come on. Alright, get 
that one out. And we're going to try one drop, not half the container, on this one. it around with the other threads of the other bolt a little bit. All right, now we can go ahead and put the two remaining bolts back in. Just finger tight until you got them all in. And then snug them up by hand. You'll also find that when you're lined up with this one here, you're diagonally lined up with this one down here. Okay, now, these, we're going to check the torque on these real quick. All right, we're going to be, I got my coffee. Never forget my coffee. I'm a coffee addict. Now we're going to set this to 59 foot-pounds. Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine foot-pounds. Oh boy, these things are not even snug yet. Alright. Top one on this side. It's critical that you get the torque on these correct because if you over tighten these, all it'll take is a really good pothole to snap them off. Okay. Go back and double check. assembly installed. Now let's clean, oh, we already cleaned these, we don't have to do anything with it. All we got to do is put a little fluid film on this and then we can put the rotor on top of it. Now take a cloth, in this case one we've already been doing the uh, tin man stuff with. We're just going to stuff this down in here for the time being. Just pull it up over the brake shoes, so you cover your brake shoes, and then just give it a light, light spritz, turn it, light spritz. Make sure you catch the edges of this a little bit too, but don't get so much on there that it starts to run on you. If it starts to run, just take your cloth and just dab off some of where it was a little too thick so you don't want this spinning off into your parking brake but that's all you need just you know, get some of the globs off of it and go ahead and put the brand new rotor on trust me people this is going to get a lot more interesting in a minute okay good old Bosch Nickel coated rotors. These do not need to be cleaned, but if your hands are dirty, <laughs> it won't take long to show all over these. Now, remember what I was saying about the inspection hole and the adjuster. Got the adjuster hole here, it's off center. This is off center to the right. We're off center to the left, so we want this one right here. It's going to line up with this little adjuster hole. Slides on just like that. Now, spin a lug nut on for the time being. Be careful because these are capped lug nuts, and if you go too far, the lug nut will stop, it'll bottom out, and it'll damage the lug nut. So, what I'm going to do is grab a large nut to go between this and the rotor. Now, old axle nuts 
stuff like that usually work fairly good. Not basically anything that fits over it. The whole purpose of this is just to keep that rotor snug while you're working on it. And so you don't have to keep handling the rotor so many times you get fingerprints all over it. And yes, 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 backing plate should have been replaced too while this was all apart, but this, this they just want to get this thing safe, functional, don't want to put a lot of money into it, which is the case with almost everything out here. Now, getting back to the caliper. These pistons are so rusted up that they will not retract all the way. The slide pins that go in here are so rusted up that they are going to require a lot of resurfacing to get them to be cooperative. So we bought brand new calipers with brackets, you know, semi-loaded for both sides. However, we ran into a small problem. This particular bracket is meant for the smaller disc, smaller rim. The ones that they sent us was probably for a one inch larger diameter disc because it holds the brake pads half an inch up off the off of the rotor. So if you run into that situation and are fortunate enough that the new bracket and the old bracket are similar enough that you can interchange them, we're going to be putting the old bracket back on, but we're going to be doing it with the new hardware. And the whole difference is, is because there's a half inch difference between this hole and this hole on this one and on the other one. Let me, let me get that one out of the box and show you. Made in China. Here is our brand new semi-loaded assembly. New hardware, we got the hardware with the brake pads, and a new banjo bolt with copper crush washers. We'll be taking care of all of that in a moment too. Now, this bracket and this bracket, if I hold these side by side, you see the difference? Look at this part in the middle where my thumb is. There's the difference. So this makes this sit way too high and it won't line up on the rotor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this backing plate or this bracket and we're going to switch it with that bracket. Now, just to make sure we drive all of the other mechanics in the near future absolutely bananas, we're going to cover that hole with a piece of electrical tape. Maybe.